Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to talk about difference between dry heat sterilization and moist heat sterilization. So let's start. So see the first point of difference, definition. So when we talk about dry heat sterilization, it is actually a kind of physical method of sterilization, okay? That uses high temperature under dry conditions. And if we talk about moist heat sterilization, it is also a kind of physical method of sterilization, but it uses high temperature pressure generated by vaporized water that is steam to sterilize different type of materials. Okay, let's see the second point of difference type of heat used as the name is indicating dry heat sterilization makes the use of what dry heat and moist heat sterilization makes the use of what moist heat. Let's see the third point of difference penetration power. Penetration power of what? Here we are going to talk about the penetration power of heat. Then you should know that dry heat is actually having what? Less penetration power. When we compare it with that of moist heat which has more penetration power. Okay. Let's see the fourth point of difference. Equipment used. Then you should know most commonly to carry out dry heat based sterilization in microbiology laboratory we use hot air oven. And to carry out moist heat sterilization, we make the use of autoclave. Okay, let's see the fifth point of difference, sterilizing agent. Then you should know in case of dry heat sterilization or we can say hot air oven, the key sterilizing agent is actually what? Dry heat or hot air. And in case of autoclave, the sterilizing agent is what? It is saturated steam under pressure, right? So in case of autoclave, it is actually the saturated steam under pressure which increases the temperature of the vessel. That in turn leads to sterilization of different type of materials. Let's see the sixth point of difference, temperature time combination. If we talk about temperature and time combination, then you should know generally 160 to 180 degree Celsius temperature is used in case of hot air oven or dry heat sterilization for two to three hours to sterilize different type of materials. And in case of autoclave, we use 121 degree Celsius temperature, 15 LBS pressure per square inch of the vessel for 15 to 20 minutes, right? So this is actually the time and temperature combination what is most commonly used. But in certain books, you can also find like this, the temperature range for hot air oven could be given like this, 150 to 190 degree Celsius for 30 minutes to three hours. And in case of autoclave, you can find it like this, 110 degree Celsius to 135 degree Celsius or more than this temperature for 15 to 45 minutes. Then you should know this time and temperature combination is also fine. There is nothing wrong with it because it varies from the kind of materials we are going to sterilize, right? So whatever materials we are sterilizing, according to that, we can go for opting the temperature and time combination for these two type of equipments, right? But generally, the first range, what I have shown here in black color, this is actually preferred and used in microbiology laboratory, right? Let's see the seventh point of difference, mode of action. So when we talk about mode of action, mode of action of what? Mode of action of dry heat and moist heat. How it results in killing of microorganisms or living entities. Then you should know dry heat, what we use in hot air oven, it actually carries out oxidative damage of biomolecules, okay, which results in killing of what? Living entities. And autoclave, if we talk about, autoclave results in what? It results in denaturation and coagulation of proteins. Of what? Microorganisms or any kind of living entities, okay? That leads to sterilization by moist heat. Let's see the eighth point of difference, type of materials. What kind of materials we can sterilize by dry heat? and what kind of materials we can sterilize by moist heat. Then you should know dry heat sterilization in microbiology laboratory is generally used to carry out sterilization of glasswares, right? What kind of glassware like battery plates, pipettes, test tubes, slides, cover slips, etc. Secondly, it is also used to sterilize surgical metal instruments like forceps, scissors, needles. These are also sterilized by using preferably dry heat sterilization. Then oils, powders, waxes, etc. These are also sterilized by dry heat sterilization. And if we talk about moist heat sterilization, heat stable liquids, we can say they are used here, right? But remember here, the point to be noted here is the liquid should be heat stable in nature when we uh, go for sterilization by moist heat because moist heat has 
very high penetration power and if we talk about liquids then you should know microbiological media are always sterilized by moist heat sterilization in laboratory right and what kind of media like they can be broth or they can be agar liquid medium or solid type of medium then certain type of chemical solutions like vaccines water these all are what these all are the kind of materials which are sterilized by moist heat sterilization secondly we can also go for using what glassware glassware we can also use in case of autoclave for sterilization right as we can use for dry heat sterilization but here of course they should be heat resistant okay then let's see uh, other materials plastic ware surgical instruments textile materials rubber etc these all are other kind of materials what are actually sterilized by using moist heat sterilization here uh, one or two points uh, more i would like to tell you if we talk about textile materials that what kind of dressing in rnd uh, are used by research scientists or we can say during uh, operations in operation theaters surgeons what kind of dressings they use they are actually sterilized or we can say all kind of fabrics uh, are sterilized by moist heat sterilization only and if i talk about surgical instrumentation then you should know metal based instruments which are actually uh, able to corrode by moist heat sterilization they are not uh, subjected to sterilization by using this particular method okay those type of equipments or instruments we can sterilize by using dry heat and other which are actually resistant to moist heat they can be used here right for sterilization now there is a question what kind of materials we cannot sterilize by dry heat sterilization then of course this we are very much clear that that this type of material we can sterilize next you should know fabrics rubber or plastic wear this type of material is actually not sterilized by dry heat sterilization and if we talk about moist heat sterilization of course all this kind of materials can be sterilized but when it comes to oils fats powders heat sensitive plastic glassware and fluids then these type of materials we cannot sterilize by moist heat sterilization let's see the nine point of difference biological waste decontamination see it is very important point whatever kind of biological waste is going to be generated in the microbiology laboratory or where microbiology work is performed what kind of method out of these two we should use to sterilize them then you should know dry heat sterilization is actually not used okay for biological waste decontamination we use moist heat based sterilization method right let's see the 10 point of difference indicator organism so if we talk about indicator organism then you should know first what is indicator indicators are actually we can say those type of chemical substances or biological agents which can indicate the efficacy of sterilization whether sterilization has been done appropriately or not we have sterilized any material but how we can ensure that sterilization is done so for that we use indicator right so indicators i told you are of two types chemical indicators and biological indicators so here i am going to tell you what kind of biological indicator is there for dry heat sterilization or to judge the accuracy of or to evaluate the efficacy of moist heat sterilization so let's see for dry heat sterilization bacillus atrophius which is formally known as bacillus subtilis okay its spores are used for, to uh, evaluate the performance of dry heat sterilization and if we talk about moist heat sterilization then for um, moist heat sterilization geo bacillus stereothermophilus this is used as an indicator organism right in what form it is used its spores are used so you should know that for this indicator organism or i can say biological indicator of sterilization previously i also uploaded a very informative video on this channel so you can check out that that is in hindi and english language okay so you can uh, if you are comfortable with these languages then you can go and check the video for biological indicator of sterilization to further make your concept uh, clear about it that how using indicator organisms we can evaluate the efficacy of sterilization method what we are going to use okay let's see the next point of difference effectiveness so if we talk about effectiveness then you should know dry heat sterilization is actually less effective and moist heat sterilization is most effective right so then uh, you may be thinking that how it is uh, so that it is most effective of course this effectiveness actually we judge on the basis of the time and temperature combination used here we use lower temperature and less time and here we use more time and more temperature right that is the reason we say that this is most effective and this is less if less effective but you should know when it comes to their practical application then both of these techniques are important right because there are certain materials what we can sterilize by dry heat sterilization only 
while other materials they can only be sterilized by means of moist heat sterilization right so now 12th point equipment cost so if we talk about equipment cost dry heat sterilization we carry out by means of hot air oven and it is actually less expensive and moist heat sterilization we usually prefer by means of what autoclave so autoclave is more expensive so this equipment cost is actually including both type of cost what procurement cost we can say purchase cost as well as maintenance cost right so these are the differences between dry heat and moist heat sterilization i hope the kind of efforts made by me to create and present this content is really going to help you thank you so much keep watching